Welcome to Technically Speaking from EBR's EdTech team. We invite you to join us on this podcast every other week to talk techie with us. Welcome to our second episode of Technically Speaking. I am one of your hosts, Brittany Davenport. And I'm Nikki Washington, Techie Nikki. (laughs) And as we said, every episode, we will start off with a little tech tea. So let's see what's going on today in this technology world. Brittany, I want to get into Google Docs. And y'all probably like, tech tea, Google Docs? (laughs) Yes. Because the students are using them as chat rooms. Uh, So let's get into this. Yes, they are. They are most definitely using Google Docs as the new age way of note passing. This is how they text in your classrooms now. So you mean to tell me they are not going to experience writing notes on paper and sneaking it to their friends, (laughs) balling it up, putting the check no, yes boxes? Oh, no, no, no. They are way past that. No more handwritten notes. No more pass this back to my crush no no now they are using google docs to do everything and i gotta give it to them it's very creative very innovative these kids that's what that's what we always say you have to stay ahead of them because they they do what we ask them to do they use their critical thinking (laughs) (laughs) yes we are teaching these digital native students these students that were born holding a cell phone so we have to make sure that we always stay one step ahead but right now they're a little bit above us (laughs) and I know this is not just going on in EBR there's a lot of districts surrounding us I'm sure districts in other states these students all have these devices in their hand and they know during class time you know you're not allowed to have your cell phone just out and texting so I'm sure students all across the world are utilizing Google to do this I'm sure they said Google was a collaboration tool and those students understood the assignment. <laughs> so what are they actually talking about, like, though, on the Google Docs? Like, what, what con- was the conversation? So you would hope that they were talking about math and science, social studies, and all of the things that the teacher was talking about. But sadly, that is not the case. Most of the time, they're talking about bullying. Are they talking about each other in class? Like, what is her hair? How? Look at her hair. Look at his shoes. Um, why is he wearing that? So they are not using it appropriately at all. They are just, they're taking it too far. And as a parent, once again, I would, you know, as a parent, we have to talk to them, teachers, adults. So we should use this Google Docs chat room as a teachable moment from the teachers, right. parents, any adults. We have to turn around and make this a teachable moment. I'm not mad at the fact that they're taking this and making it into a chat room, but I don't like some of the things that they're doing in the chat room. So what are some things as a parent or teacher that we could do to help guide them in the right direction with using Google Docs as chat room? Well, one thing that they could do is stop teaching from behind the computer. So I know we have a computer and all of the students have computers, so as a teacher, you would think I can sit at my computer, I can use GoGuardian, I can watch what they're doing. But sometimes we just have to go back to that traditional way of teaching, that traditional classroom management of getting up and walking around to see what's going on. Because before everyone had computers, we had to walk around and make sure they won't, weren't um, writing those notes and passing it to their friend or passing it to the uh, person behind them. So now we have to make sure that they aren't in Google Docs and collaborating with their friends on the other side of the classroom, just getting up and being involved in the classroom, walking around and looking at the students. That's a good point because as a teacher, I can see the student actually fooling the teacher just being on the Google Doc. They can change if They're on a Google Doc that they've created. They can change it to whatever topic title that the teacher has and make it look as if they're actually doing the teacher's assignment, but they're actually having their own chat room, but they've made it look that way. So as a teacher, one thing I did is since we transitioned over to a one-to-one classroom, I organized my desk Mm -hmm. into a way that I could manage a one-to-one classroom. I never was a teacher that stood at the board. So I always wanted to be able to walk around. Hated it. (laughs) 
walk around and also be at the back of the room so I can I want to see everybody I don't want to see everybody I don't want to stand here and not miss everybody so I organize my room so that the places that I like to stand and teach from I could see all students and their screens all of that they hated it but I promise you I didn't have those problems <laughs> right and that's just a part of building that classroom culture just making sure that the students know that I'm always aware of what's going on um I want to make sure that they're having fun in class but I want to make sure that they're also staying on task and that it was just a way of it was just a way of life in my in my classroom like they knew my classroom culture they knew that I was always going to be up and around and I was always going to be involved in all the groups Yep, and they're not going to try you when they know. They test you only if they know that they can, oh, she's not going to watch us, so we can do it. But also these kids have to know, and parents, you need to know, Google has something called revision history. Yes. Use that. It is it is a hidden secret gem that they have in here, and it shows everything that was said and who said it and color-coded, so they could never deny I didn't say that. And yes, who deleted it what? Did. They also, mm-hmm. it will show you that they deleted it. It will put a line through it. This one was deleted because that's how they think they can get over. That's how we always have to stay that one step ahead. We know that we can go to that version history under file and see what everyone said, deleted, and put back in. <laughs> and, then, and like, I love Google because it leaves a paper trail. Yeah. And you can be honest with your students, your students at home, your kids in your classroom and tell them hey, don't ever think you're getting away with anything we know. Because also they need to know that we have GoGuardian, as Ms. Davenport said. Mm-hmm. And when you type inappropriate words on there, that even on a Google Doc, it sends alerts to everybody in the district. It sends it to IT. It comes to us. It goes to the administrators at the schools. We get a copy of your document. So you're never, no one is never not watching what you're doing. And it's just good to always communicate that to your students. Make it a teachable moment and let them know. You think you're getting away with it, but actually people see what you're doing. You're not getting away with this. We know that you're doing this and no one may have not brought it to the forefront yet, but no Big Brother is always watching yeah. security at IT. They're always watching everything you students do, and certain words trigger the program. Go Guardian and your principal. Everybody gets alerts, and we can actually just send it to the parents. So, as a teacher, be honest with them. Let them know. Yeah, show them. This is what it is. Show them because some people, some kids won't believe it until right. They, they see have it. to see it. You have to pull up that version history on a Google Doc yourself and show them, or show them those alerts that you're getting in Google Guardian. Just let them know. Be honest. That's another part of building that classroom culture of being honest and not a uh, I got you. Uh, just let them know before you have to get to that I got you state. So to sum this up, we just want to say, teachers, parents. Adults, we're going to really have to work together yes. to prevent some of the things that's going on. Because to be honest, we just have to know bullying sometimes for our kids, it turns into suicide. We've lost so many students right. that could not handle the bullying. And let's be honest, some of these kids are mean. They are cruel. cruel. They, yes. <laughs> Most and definitely. they will really hurt those children's feelings and the children. The children that they are bullying, they're bullying every day, all day, till they've had enough. And we want to prevent all of these things. We want to make sure our students are safe. And this goes back to what we always talk about, digital citizenship. Let's make sure we're not just teaching it like we said, we said this before. We're going to keep saying it. Just don't teach it during digital citizenship week. Let's start talking about it every day. Bring it back into our classroom. Bring it to the forefront because it's important. This is something I think some skills that our students are lacking, and we don't want them to turn into adults that go online and bully as well. Right. So let's prevent it now, and let's keep our students safe, and let all of our students feel welcomed around all kids in EBR. Because I don't want to. We have lost some students in EBR to suicide. We don't want to see any other kids lose their life for bullying things that we can prevent by having conversations, taking it to the next level of what we need to do. So I think we need to intervene more as parents, adults, and teachers with the technology because it's a lot of access that we've given these students in their hands. So we just need to 
guide them through this because they don't know what to do. That's why we're, they're still kids. They're still in our house. We're still parenting them and teaching them. So they're still learning. So let's fix this by making sure that we are always having these conversations about digital citizenship. And let's continue to have the conversation. So every week you may hear us talk about digital citizenship because it's so important, you guys. Yes, it is one of the most important things that we are dealing with right now with these digital native students. Let's get into our Tech Talk episode for this week. We really want to talk about what do we actually do with EdTech? Because I know some of you guys are wondering, like, what do they really (laughs) do? So we really want to, you know, get into detail and explain and have a thoughtful conversation of what we do so we can be utilized correctly. So I'm going to give you a formal definition and then we'll go into more detail. So who are we? We are highly motivated and experienced, but yet certified teachers. Yes, we are certified teachers. We can teach now. (laughs) And we support teachers, staff, administrators, and even curriculum teams in creating future-ready learning environments. So you may say, how can we help you? So some of the ways that we can help you is we can come in, we can do PLCs at your school with you and um, small groups. If you want to just do grade levels, we can do a PLC or a PD for your whole entire staff. Um, We can come in and do one-on-one coaching, one-on-one training on any of the tech tools that we support. So some of the tools that we support are like Canvas. Um, Clever, Nearpod, Cami, GoGuardian, and other ed tech tools. We might not actually support them. We might not actually manage and roster them, but we can come in and show you how to incorporate them into your lessons so that you can keep your students engaged. Also, we, we do Google Boot Camps. We, Google is not going anywhere. We're bringing those Google boot camps back. Stay tuned for those. If you're interested in becoming a Google certified educator, which I highly recommend and encourage, because remember, despite the rumor, Google is not going anywhere. Our students are on Chrome devices that support Google. So our district will continue to use the Google product. So we want you to be well versed in Google and get certified. That's great on your resume. So we'll be bringing those back as well. So we do boot camps for Google level one, level two, trainer boot camps as well. So just make sure you guys are ready. Stay tuned. We have some news coming up about vouchers to actually get you certified because you know that is a price on it. But we have those exciting things coming up. So stay tuned for that. We train you in Microsoft, whatever platform, as Ms. Bush said, we train you on those things. But also don't forget, we support the Chromebooks. So if there's any issues going on with the Chromebooks, we come in and support you. We help you manage your Chromebooks. We give you some management tools to help you manage your Chromebooks and your students. It sky's the limits of what we can do. If it's something that we didn't list and it's tech related, we can come assist you with that. So that is our goal and our role. And we work around your schedule. So we don't just say we got to come when we want to. No, we ask you what's your availability, what works for you, because we work later than uh, most. We get off at 430. So we come after school for after school sessions as well. We can do one on one sessions, whatever it is that you need to help meet your needs. We're here to support you by coming in to plan with you, model, co-teach, do professional development, conference peers, after school, whole staff, PLCs. That is when we come in to actually support you. So definitely feel free to reach out with us if you need any support. So let's go ahead and get into the the platforms that we actually support. Let's start with Canvas. So, because that's a big topic right now. the hot topic of the (laughs) district. (laughs) So, Canvas is a learning management system that the district has been had. It's not new. It's been here. We've had it for over uh, four years now in our district. At one point, the district was only utilizing Canvas for teachers to turn in lesson plans. And then that stopped. And the teachers just turn in lesson plans, email, or Google Classroom, whatever the school chose to do. But this year, we're in a transition year. If you did not know, this is our transition year from Google Classroom to Canvas. We're spending this whole year letting everyone know, getting the word out, and training, going into PLCs, doing trainings after school to let everyone know that Canvas is coming and we're making the transition. So, because we didn't want to just take it and give it to you guys this year, And you didn't know how to use the platform because I must say there is a lot to Canvas, but I think you will love Canvas. 
It'll help keep your thing organized and structured just as it does in Google Classroom. And I hope that you will see the benefits as you start getting the trainings from Canvas. But this year during the transition year, this is where we're actually coming in to do, like I said, those PLCs, those after-school trainings starting in December, January, around that time. Look out for Canvas trainings during the after-school hours. We'll be offering only those. In the summertime, we're going to go real hard and do a lot of Canvas training as well so that you guys make that transition. Some schools have already secured us. We come in each month. And we do a bit of Canvas that way by the end of the month, everyone will know Canvas. So it's definitely up to the school. It's your choice. You tell us, we'll come and do it. But it's your choice on how you want it done. But Canvas is coming. We are making that transition. And this is a transition year, a learning year for us all. And I got to say one thing before I stop talking, because I keep going on and on about <laughs> Canvas. Canvas is live. We have actually rostered Canvas. It is live now. You must go ahead and log in. You will have to go to Clever to actually log in, and you're still using your Microsoft credentials to log in, but you need to go through Clever to actually log into Canvas now because you won't see the Microsoft login when you go to that actual EVR Instructure homepage. You won't see it there. So make sure you use the Clever button to actually go through Canvas to sign in. It is live. You can go and play with it. You'll see that your courses have been synced from J Campus. They're under your unpublished section. And you can, so if you want to see how we'll look, play around with it. You're not going to hurt anything. You're not going to set off a bomb. Our kids are not in it yet. Some schools are electing to start in January. That's fine. But if you have any questions or concerns or you need any support, reach out to the, my team member that's over your zone. They'll be glad to support you through this process. The Canvas is live. Canvas is coming for the 22-23 school year. And we hope as you come through our training that you see the benefits of actually using Canvas in our district. All right. So that was a really good transition into Clever. So Clever is another one of our um, platforms that we support. So uh, Clever, we have to make sure that we remember that Clever syncs with J Campus. So everything that your school puts in for J Campus syncs with Clever. And you are able to go and sign in to all of the apps and websites that our district supports with a single sign-on link. And um, like Vicki just said, Canvas is now in Clever. So once you log into Clever, you can go and search for Canvas, and it will let you sign in with that single sign-on link right there from Clever. So other things that Clever does, if you are not aware, you can go in as a teacher. You can go in and make custom pages, put all of the links and resources for your students on your custom page in Clever. We offer trainings on Clever throughout the year. If um, you need any help with Clever, we are happy to come in and show you how you can customize Clever to make it the, exactly what you need for your students. You can use Clever to send out messages. If you are a classroom teacher with um, a roster with kids, roster to your name, you can send messages out to your parents. Your parents, your students' parents can go in and they can get a Clever login as well so that they can see what is going on in the district and some of the things that you are using in your classrooms. Um, Clever is just a one-stop shop. It is one of the, the best tools, I think, that the district offers. Um, if you are not use, utilizing Clever, then you need to go ahead and start utilizing it as much as you can. Your students don't have to remember those passwords. If you teach elementary school, your students can even get a badge where they will log in with just a badge. So Clever is one of those awesome port platforms that we um, support. So if you have any questions about Clever, if you need any help with Clever, go ahead and reach out to us, and we will come out. We'll be happy to come out and show you more about Clever. Yes, we love Clever. It's a wonderful resource, you guys. Jump on the Clever bandwagon. Love Clever. Also, let's just insert this right here because we get this question all of the time. Can when you see when sometimes some guys when they see us can you fix our computer can you fix our board <laughs> sometimes yes but we are not actually IT the information technology guys that come around with the DTS shirts they're working our thing we're all under the same umbrella we're all under DTS Department of Technology Services but there's branches in this department we're tech integration then you have 
the information technology part. You have the SIS team. There's a whole bunch of pieces running behind the scenes of technology. We are actually not those guys. If you do have issues, technical issues, we want you to place your help desk ticket in. Place your help desk ticket for those issues. Now, there are some issues that we could resolve. Um, I They call me the IT person on the team. I do, resolve, <laughs> <laughs> I do resolve issues with the boards and the computers I can. I've been trained to do so. But the rest of my team members, you know, that's not their area of focus. They don't want to, you know, just bombard them with that they actually want to do tech integration things so we want you guys to make sure you place in your help desk ticket for your technical issues and those guys that's assigned to your zone they'll be out there in a timely manner to actually resolve your issue so just remember we do work in technology but there's different branches to the technology department and we're we're we are the instructional technology team that it means we can help you with instruction and technology and help blend the two because maybe you feel like I have my kids on the Chromebook all day. Right. And I may want to blend this instruction and I want to, you know, limit the time, but I still want to use technology because that engages the student. Those are the type of things that we can help you with. If you want to transition your bell ringers or your exit tickets from being paper to digital, those are the type of things. If you want to make your whole entire lesson digital, we can help you with that. We can give you some tools to get started with to actually get you on your way with that. To take your lesson plan, read it, and help you change the information in there to actually create your digital lesson. So those are the things that we actually like to do, even with classroom management. Oh yeah, and we can go into go guarding with this. Yeah. So with classroom management, we can give you some technology tools that you can use to actually help manage your classroom. But let's go ahead and talk about Go Guardian and how, yes, it helps you manage your students on the Chromebook. But we talked about this earlier in the show. It does not get rid of that traditional classroom management that you have by actually getting up, walking your room, and actually seeing what the students are doing. And if you need more support with Go Guardian, you want some one on one training because guess what? They did add a lot of features this year. Did you see all those features that yeah. they've added to Go Guardian? You could go in and like annotate over the, the student screens. Like there's so many more things that they've added into Go Guardian. And like Nikki said, it's a great tool. Like it's a really good tool to use, but we cannot forget that we still have to walk around the classroom. But we would love to come in and help you if you are not sure about how to do all of those extra things that Go Guardian has, like uh, setting scenes and things like that. Right, Nikki? Yes. And you would want to set your scenes, especially like on test day. You can set your scene to the, stu the students will only be able to open that one tab, or maybe you just tired of them having 20 tabs. You can set your scene every day to limit the number of tabs that they have and what websites that they're actually going to. But just keep in mind, it is technology, right? And we have and it goes down. <laughs> that, and our students are very smart. They're innovative and intelligent. They do find you know, ways to beat the system. So <laughs> they know how to avoid being seen on Go Guardian. Some of the things that we know and see, if, and if you guys have seen other things, share it with us, uh, re reply to the uh, comments for this episode and let us know what other things you've seen. But for one, for one thing, they go and remove themselves from the Google Classroom. The students figured this out way in the beginning when we first moved over to Go Guardian, yep. that they can remove themselves from the Google Classroom. They'll jot down the code. And then remove themselves, and then maybe at the end of the day, when they finish doing what they're doing on the Chromebook, they'll go and add themselves back. And then I think they figure out, okay, the teachers caught on to that, and they've been changing the codes or just disabling the code, and then I actually have to ask her to get back in. Mm -hmm. So they do that, and then they go on apps. I know you have all, we have gotten so many complaints about Minecraft. Microsoft Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> But they're on the app, you guys. And Microsoft Minecraft is for education. And we're going to be doing some trainings on that. Too. So you can, if that's, if that's what they're doing, meet them where they are. Tie that into your instruction. Just think about how much engagement you would have if you incorporate I know that's another thing. You guys are like, oh, no, another <laughs> thing. But, hey, if that's how I got to get them, oh, that's how I would engage them in. But Microsoft from, um, Minecraft is for education. They are using it, that app. And it is open to them to use, but just keep in mind on Go Guardian when the students are on their Chromebooks and they're in the app, you will not be able to see what they're doing. Now, IT is in talks, 
and they've been in heavy talks with them about getting this corrected. So hopefully they'll have this rectified soon so that you'll be able to monitor the students on the apps as well. But that's why we said you have to get back to the old traditional getting up and walking around to monitor the students because there are, you know, workarounds that the students know about to not be seen and monitored on Go Guardian. Yeah. Also, we have a uh, Nearpod. Nearpod is a district favorite. We I paid a lot of money for Nearpod, you guys. <laughs> it's absolutely yeah. my favorite. <laughs> and I got to I got to give it to Nearpod. I have to give it to them. During the pandemic, they came with some game changers yeah. with those updates. I appreciate those updates that they that they gave us during the <laughs> pandemic because one of my complaints was I needed to have a whiteboard. I didn't want to have to go to jail board to do a whiteboard in my Nearpod lesson. Now you can do that. You can now annotate on any slide in Nearpod. Those were the simple things that a teacher needed during the pandemic that they've added in Nearpod. Nearpod has an abundance of resources for teachers that are ready made to go. And it's a great platform. So we highly recommend that you utilize that as well. Use that with your kids. And you don't have to put the whole entire lesson in Nearpod. You don't have to burn them out and make them sit through a whole entire lesson in Nearpod. You can put your bell ringer, your quiz, your hook in there. If you want to have um, a collaboration board, you can place that in there. Polls. You can, you can be real creative with it if you want to use it daily so that you don't burn the students out. And they have those timers in there and the recording feature. It's just an abundance of resources that a teacher has at their hands that they can utilize. So we do encourage you guys to utilize Nearpod because we do pay for it every year. We notice that the usage is down, then the district will not support it and purchase it. And then we will miss that tool. So please use it. And reach out to us if you want if you want to know some innovative ways to actually use Nearpod, creative ways to use it with your students. Reach to, reach out to us. We're going to support you with that to show you how you can actually utilize that in your classroom with your students so that you don't bore them with it. Because if you just put them on Nearpod and just say, hey, do these slides every day, yes, they're going to get tired. Right. Yes. Yeah. So don't burn them out, but definitely engage them, change up how you do it each day, got to change it up with our students to keep them engaged. Right. And if you didn't know from the district, we have gone in and put in a lot of the curriculum that you use. So they already have some ready-made things like for Euchre Math, for sure, all of the lessons from kindergarten through 12th grade, all of the Eureka Math lessons are there. They're already made. You can just go in, look through them, take out the slides that you don't want, take out the things that you don't want, edit it to make it, Fit your students and use those. So those are already made. If you didn't know, you just go to your district library and you can go in and edit and use those freely. Um, another thing that is really good that you can use that we support is Cami. So if you haven't been using Cami, you need to start using Cami because Cami has so many things, so many great things that you can use with your students. You can go in and put your PDFs and your slides into your um, Google Classroom, and the students can annotate those files. So they don't have to go and try to figure out a way to put a text box in on something. Like You don't have to go out of your way anymore. You can just open these PDFs in Cami. You can um, put text box. You can draw on them. You can highlight you can, what else? You can record, you can record your voice, you can record your video of yourself. Cami has a plethora of uh, features that you can use and the student, and it's gonna, um, it's gonna keep track of it. You're gonna be able to see all of the students' files. They're able to go in, annotate, do everything they need to do in Cami, and then send it back to you in your Google Drive. That way you're not worried about paper anymore. So what else can Cami do? I'm trying to think right now. Oh, 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 this is a big one. This is a really big one. So with Cami, if you have a PDF that's like 100 pages and you want to give 100 pages to your students at once, you can go in with Cami and you can take that PDF down to one page or you can take it down to two pages. So you can go in and split your PDF. It's called Merge and Split. You can split your PDF into however many pages you want to to give it to your students. So Cami is a very good tool, and um, if you have any questions, as we've been saying throughout this show, 
if you have any questions about Cami, reach out to us. We will be happy to come in and do a PD with you, a one-on-one, -on -one, a PD with your staff, whatever you want to with Cami. If you have not been using Cami with your students, it is a complete game changer. And you know what else I like about I like about uh, actually Nearpod and Cami. It like for instance, Nearpod has the immersive reader to accommodate students, oh, yeah. our young learners, or even our ESL. Uh, students, they can change it to their native language to still be able to participate in the activities. So you can do the same thing in Cami. They can choose their language that the document needs to be read to them. So it really provides those accommodations for our learners that the teacher may not be able to provide. I can't speak Spanish. I can't speak French, any of those things. So now I have tools that I can actually use that the district has purchased to actually provide support for my students and help me to actually communicate with these students because in the past, of course, before technology, it was just no way I could actually communicate with them without right. having somebody to actually translate it for me. So I like that these tools that we actually support actually support our different students in the district and help our teachers as well. Right. So those are all, I think that's all of the ones that we actually support from our district, from our um, department. So we talked about Canvas, talked about Clever, Nearpod, Cami, Go Guardian. But like we said at the beginning, any type of ed tech tool that you want to use in your class, if you have researched something and you want to use it in your class and you can't think of a way to incorporate it, reach out to us. We will be happy to come in. I know Flipgrid is one of my favorites. I don't know if everybody else in the department is on Flipgrid like I'm on Flipgrid, but Flipgrid is absolutely one of my favorite things to do with my students. So um, if you want to start using that with your students, like reach out to us. Let us come in and help you to help your students become so much more engaged into your lessons. Because as we said before, our students get burnt out. Like they get tired. They don't want to just do the same thing over and over and over. They are used to these digital platforms, these games and these uh, phones with all of the different stimulants. So we have to make sure that we keep them engaged and we don't give them their chance to find these other ways to stay engaged into your, in your classroom. So they're not looking outside. You are keeping them engaged the whole time with all of these ed tech tools that um, we have available. And all of these tools that we talk about, this is not all we can support you with. If you see something that you like, we can right. vet it out and see if that's something we can support you with. But just in general, ed tech integration with your class, that's what we do. Your students, we transition. We can transition your carpool. If your carpool is just a hot mess, it's <laughs> long, we can create you a silent dismissal so that your carpool is now organized, quiet, and running smoothly. Things like that. We, we don't just support the teachers. Like I said, we support the staff. Anybody, if you need Google dashboards, whatever it is that you need support with, you want to figure out a way to streamline something that you're doing, challenge us. Give us that challenge and we can yes, see we how we can help you do it. ready for challenges. <laughs> always ready for the challenge. So, you guys, thank you for tuning in for this episode. We hope you are enjoying our episodes. If you want to suggest some topics for us, just leave it in the comments, some, some topics that you would like us to uh, talk about, and we'll definitely uh, think about talking about those topics. And if you actually want to even be a guest on our show, let us know. We'll invite you as a guest to our show so that we can chat and have uh, tech talk with some of our famous EBR coworkers. We don't mind at all. We are, we are open to the change. All right, so if you are doing something amazing, because I know you all are doing some amazing things, we are always out in the field, always out in schools, and we see some absolutely amazing things. So if you know you are one of those people that are doing those amazing things, reach out to us, and if not, we will reach out to you <laughs> to ask you if you want to be on our show. So that's it for today's show. If you're listening to us right now on the YouTube channel, great. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. But you can also check us out on your favorite podcast app that you utilize. We're on Google Podcasts. We're also on Apple Podcasts. But there are some other apps that people prefer to use. You can find us there as well. So check us out. Share it with a friend. Let us know how we're doing. This is just our 
We are in our first few episodes, but we're getting our feet wet. Let us know how we're doing. And if you even want to come on our show, let us know. Or let us know what topics you would like to hear. And we'll have those discussions here on our podcast. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at EBR Ed Tech and Twitter at EdTechEBR. See you guys next time.